chewing on my calf and dragging me around. <laughs> Orgy Tard was attacked by a black bear. <laughs> Husky dog Grizzly rushed to his rescue. It's been 20 years since poor Guitard almost died in the attack that lasted over seven hours. And the reason he's alive today is down to the courage of one remarkable dog, a husky called Grizzly. There's nobody, I think, that could tell you this story that their dog would do that for them. You know, he was with me till he passed away and he lived till a ripe old age of 16 and a half. He's about the exact same size as Grizzly was. Pretty well the same build, same face. If it wasn't for Grizzly, I wouldn't be here today. I would definitely would have died if he didn't put his life on the line for mine. So, yeah, if it wasn't for Grizzly, I'd be dead. Come on. Come on, big guy. All right, watch them, man. They're not a hard breed to take care of, and they get to be very loyal. Tough, fearless. They look like wolves, but they wouldn't hurt nobody. They just love everybody. Paul's love of huskies started when he was a boy and soon developed into a passion for racing dog teams. But Grizzly was Paul's number one dog. It didn't take him long at all to become a lead dog. By 18 months, he was leading my team, which is very young for a lead dog. I don't think you could teach a lead dog to be a lead dog. They have to be born with it. They have to have the instinct. He would never look back, never hesitate, and that's why he became such a good lead dog. I don't think there's a Siberian team out there that could beat us. With Grizzly in front, Paul and his dog team were winning races and soon ranked eighth in the world. Hey, Spooky, how are you? Hey, Grizzly. Morning, boy. You get one of these dogs in your lifetime, and Grizzly was that one dog. Okay, got a special treat for you. Your lead dog becomes one of your best friends. That's a good boy. I would never have to worry with him leading my team. And one day, 20 years ago, that special bond was put to the ultimate test. I remember that morning waking up and uh, looking outside. and The weather was perfect. It was going to be a good morning for training. Hey, Paul. Hey, John. Good day for a run? Yeah. Grizzlies in the lead? Yeah. Take them out for a few miles, see how they move. We'll see you. See you later. Grizzly has been the leader of Paul's Husky team for over three years. Let's go. When I left, it was about 10 in the morning. It was just the normal training day that I thought was going to happen. Until the snow comes, Paul runs the pack in front of a quad bike. Good fella, Grizzly. Take him out. Grizzly, as leader, runs free. The other dogs are harnessed. Okay, okay. Whilst Grizzly is the undisputed leader of the dogs, it's Paul who is the head of the pack. Well, I'm the lead dog. I'm the one that commands them. I'm the one that trains them. But they have to work as a full team. Come on, that's good. Back up. Let's go. From the house, there's probably 10 different ways you can go. That day, the route I took was known as the Zone Trail. It's like a three-mile loop, so we can go, turn the dogs around, and come back. There's a mile hill there, which is probably the highest point of the area. You're secluded, you're on your own, because there's nothing around for miles. Hi, a great job today. The best thing about it is the camaraderie between you and your dogs. You are really pumping hard today. You know, those dogs learn to love you and everything else, and they'll do anything for you. OK, hike up. Hike up, hike, hike, hike. Hike up, hike up, hike up, hike up, hike up. Enjoying being out in the wilderness, running with the dogs. A lot of people don't get to do that. There's wolves out there, moose, coyotes. There's a lot of things you got to watch for. On that fateful day, unknown to Paul, a black bear and her cubs are also in the area. We were always told that black bears, they won't bother anybody, they'll run away. We would never think of them even coming close to you. I never worried about anything like that. 
Black bears are normally very shy and avoid all contact with people. The dog team have been out training for over an hour when their behavior suddenly changes. When they pick up the speed for no reason at all, you know there's something up there on the trail. Out of nowhere, the black bear heads straight for Paul. The force was unbelievable. She stood up and she looked like nine feet tall. It just happened so quick and she was on top of me. The harness dogs continue running. She was chewing on my calf and dragging me around. Probably the scarier I've ever been in my life. This is it, you know, I'm not gonna survive this. I said, that's it, I'm dead. And all of a sudden, Grizzly came back. This was the moment when Grizzly became an animal hero. And Grizzly started biting and barking at the bear. Black bears don't like dogs. As the two fight, Paul has time to escape. I was bleeding and hurting, and there's no way I was gonna outrun her. So the only option I had was to try to get up the tree. She grabbed me by my right foot, started pulling me back down the tree. I'm dead. The only thing I could do was start kicking her, and I was kicking her, kicking her, but there's no way she was letting go. You don't think you're gonna get away from her jaws. But then again, there comes Grizzly, nipping at her and everything, so she finally let me go. Despite his injuries, Paul manages to pull himself up the tree while Grizzly fights off the black bear. But he's far from safe. Grizzly stands guard at the base of the tree. There's no way he was letting her up there. All of a sudden, I looked over and I seen two cubs on the other side of me. The worst thing you could fear is a sow bear with her cubs, you know, she's protecting her cubs. The youngsters are about four months old. Paul came between the sow and the cubs. It's one of the more serious situations that you can get into where the mother is feeling threatened for the cub's safety and she's gonna do something to remove that threat. Paul is stuck up a tree in the middle of nowhere. Boy, grizzly. Nobody knows what's happened to him. All that stands between him and an angry black bear is animal hero Grizzly. It's the start of a seven hour nightmare for man and dog. While out training his husky dog team in the wilds of Ontario, Paul Guitard was attacked by a black bear. Animal hero, husky dog Grizzly rushed to his rescue. She was chewing on my calf and dragging me around, and that's when Grizzly came back. Grizzly started biting and barking at the bear, and then she finally let me go at that point. When you're up in that tree screaming and screaming, you know nobody's gonna hear you. I got Grizzly, I think it was in 1984. <laughs> there you go, there you go. They were eight weeks old. Look at that. What do you think of this one, eh? We were playing with him and he would keep coming up to me. I'm gonna lead him up. He was more interested in me than all the other puppies, so that's one of the reasons why I picked him. He's gonna be the big guy. He was one of a kind and we had that bond from day one. Their bond is so strong that despite overwhelming danger, Grizzly refuses to leave his master's side. Paul has been trapped for over three hours when he spots a possible end to his ordeal. I could see the cubs in a tree on the other side of the trail and they started coming down. And then I thought, you know, if these cubs get down and run away, well, hopefully the mother's gonna follow her cubs and go. So then I had a little glimmer of hope, well, maybe we're gonna get out of this. And uh, they ran away and she didn't wanna leave. I don't know what was going on, but there's no way she was gonna leave me. 
The cubs disappear, but the mother stays put. Then I knew there was something really wrong because she should have left with her cubs. <laughs> cubs are gone. You know, everything's kind of mellowing out a bit. Why didn't the bear leave? Well, from the bear's perspective, maybe things didn't mellow out. She could have had a fresh kill there. Maybe that her den was right there. We don't really know. It could be that the presence of the dog is still a perceived threat from the sow, and she's not willing to leave until that threat is diminished. Her mind was set, and that was the only thing that was important to her was to kill me because I was a threat. But Grizzly wasn't intimidated. The dogs are so quick compared to a bear, and he would bark at her and nip at her, and she was never quick enough, and it would always back her up. When bears confront one another, they're not ripping and tearing each other apart. They perceive dominance through certain displays of their body position. And this is the same kind of thing that's going on with the bear and the dog. It's now over four hours since Paul was last seen. John stopped by after work and he noticed the dogs were there and everything and he knew there was something wrong. Paul? Paul? John raises the alarm, calling his friends to form a search party. But finding Paul in the wilderness is going to be a challenge. I didn't know if I was going to get rescued that day or that night, but I knew it would take time for them to find me. Somebody's coming, they're going to come get us. That was the worst feeling, not knowing if anybody was going to get there in time. Paul is still standing in the same position, unable to move. The adrenaline was just rushing through you, and you don't realize the pain, but it took about four or five hours to really set in that, you know, I'm hurt, this is life-threatening here, we got to do something. With only two hours left till nightfall, temperatures are dropping rapidly. The situation is becoming critical for Grizzly and Paul. The bear all of a sudden went off about 60 yards in the bush. She went and lied down. Probably 10, 15 minutes later, it sounded like she wasn't going to get up and she was sleeping. So that's when I thought, you know, this is my chance. Paul decides to make a run for his quad bike just 40 feet away. I only made it down like five feet and the bear gave a big grunt. And I said, okay, this ain't gonna work, so back up I went. It's now just over seven hours since Paul was first attacked and night is fast approaching. His friends are out looking for him, but it's a race against time. If Paul isn't found soon, he faces a dangerous night alone in the wilderness. Every 20 minutes, the bear approaches the tree, but Grizzly continues to fight her off. He would bark and growl and she would go off. After that long in the tree, I don't know if you say you're going crazy or whatever, but you've got no wits left. You're tired, you're dehydrated, you know, I was bleeding, pain, and that comes to a point where you think you're gonna give up. Things couldn't get any worse. And I thought, you know, something's gotta happen here or, you know, I'm just gonna make a run for it. Paul's friends, John and Mark, have been searching for over an hour. Just then I could hear a quad bike come up the trail. They got to about a few hundred feet from where I was and the bear got up. Mark is driving dangerously close to the black bear hidden in the undergrowth. Mark! There's a bear! Mark! And she started running right at him. Realising what's happened to Paul, Mark returns for help. He turned around and went back to the house. By the time they got a gun and everything else, I knew it was going to be at least another hour. <sighs> the worst feeling is not knowing if anybody was going to get there in time. <gasps> that 
was one of the worst parts because I said so close to being saved. Is she going to get me this time? You start thinking, this is it. It's probably the longest hour of my life. Paul's nightmare is far from over as the black bear becomes even more aggressive. So I'm thinking, she's going to make it up this time. Grizzly's not going to stop her. She wants to get up that tree. All of a sudden, I heard the bites come back. Mark! A, a bear on the left! There's a bear! Mark! The bear was Mark! right there, right in their face. It was over. The bear was dead. This bear was there to kill me, and she could have killed them too. There's no other way around this. <sighs> Thank you. Good boy. Oh, man, you did so well. Good boy, Grizzly. First thing I did was uh, hug Grizzly and everything. Hmm. It's been a long time. <laughs> Grizzly came back because of the bond and the love we had for each other. He cared for me probably more than anything that anybody could care for. Paul spent months recovering from his badly broken ankle and injuries to his mauled arm and leg. Grizzly, however, had no more than a scratch on his nose to show for his ordeal. After the bear attack, I raced for nearly 10 more years. Grizzly just you know, stayed with me and never left my side till he passed away and he lived till a ripe old age of 16 and a half. And he had a very wonderful, great life. Paul retired shortly after Grizzly died. For the first time in 10 years, Paul takes a one-off ride with a dog team. It feels really good riding with the dogs and Online, because it brings back a lot of memories. Brought back memory of my dog, Grizzly, and uh, how he saved my life. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. Next time. Oh! The dolphins definitely saved my life. They were keeping the shark from coming back for a fourth hit. I wouldn't be here if the dolphins hadn't saved me that day.